Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Recall. What's My up, name is up? JB. Hey there. Got Pastor Pas Seth. <laughs> Pastor Seth here. In the building. That's right. Uh, the Recall podcast is where we get to kind of reorganize our thoughts, reorganize and recollect um, what we heard this past weekend through the sermon and recall it back here on Conversation. So, yeah, just trying to go a little bit deeper. That's right. We're going to go a little bit deeper into the Word, deeper into the conversations. And we're just so thankful you guys are watching with us right now. Um, we ask that if you guys are watching, please comment you know where you who, what's your name where you're watching from and if you have anything during the conversation that you want to add or you question please just comment down below we want to continue conversations from you guys out there so nonetheless thank you again pastor yeah Seth. let's get it man excited <laughs> so again this past this past sabbath permission granted we continued yep. the permission granted yep. series all right and so um, I have a small recap sentence. I said that God has created us to be producers, and God has given us the dominion and opportunities to live fearless, great lives. Mm -hmm. I said, comma, fearless, comma, great lives. That's right. So God created us to be producers. You mm -hmm. had us... You, you, you kind of put, told everyone in that moment to comment, mm -hmm. to comment and tell the people. You said, turn to whoever next to you and tell you that, and tell them and embody that God has created us mm -hmm. to be producers, right? Sure. But now let me ask, because I feel like life right now, mm -hmm. you know, this season of life, for many of us, um, there's been a disruption, mm -hmm. right? When life, when life brings upon disruption, when the world shows up to be anything but heavenly, or when we just got, to, or, or when we just personally get too caught up with our own lives and responsibilities and whatnot, um, it seems that some of us have forgotten who we have become, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree to that? Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. I think we kind of go into survival mode. Yeah. And in, I mean, it's almost like, you know, and I don't know that if this is a true statement, but I'm sure it's true, mm -hmm. right? Someone can fact check me. But that um, it's almost like during certain climates or seasons, what I've heard in the past is like, that trees that are normally like apple trees, orange trees that normally produce a lot of fruit, yeah. a lot of times they'll go into like survival mode, shutdown mode, and they won't produce mm. because the elements, like something's not right in mm. the element, right? And so you can please fact check me on that. <laughs> but um, I've heard of that before that like, man, in order for the tree to produce fruit, it has to, everything has to be perfect. Mm. And I think for us, similarly, like when there's a disruption in our lives, disruption in our personal lives, spiritual lives, in the economy, a lot of times, if we're not careful, we'll go into survival mode yeah. and we'll kind of, kind of, almost like trying to protect ourselves. So we kind of focus our energies on getting through the season as yeah. opposed to thriving in right. that season. Surviving, not thriving. Exactly. Right. So then how can that, you know, with what you said this past, during this whole series where, we're tr where, where we are given, already given the permission granted, right, mm -hmm. to live X life, right? Mm -hmm. And we're kind of going through this. So like... How can we live? So we we've already talked about it. Like like how do, how can we live that life that God has called us to live when we have all these other things or distractions, disruptions um, that are making it so much more harder, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I feel like you know before we go into that, you mentioned you mentioned the a quote from a Disney movie. Oh yeah, my right? favorite. You, you mentioned the quote, and then Lion King. That's from the Lion King. Mufasa says. You have forgotten who you are, and so you have forgotten me. Mm -hmm. Look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the first Disney quote um, that I'm gonna go through. Mm -hmm. You know, you said that, and so I wanna. Uh, before I go on, I'm gonna have I have a few other Disney quotes, but with this and with all those other quotes, I want to hear just again how does that tie in with this message of how can we live the lives that we are called to live, even though, you know, we have so much things, mm -hmm. so many distractions, so many disruptions again. Mm -hmm. Like, so um, how does that quote fall into that message? Right. So I think it's about focus, right? So when we talk about survival mode, I think naturally there are individuals, there are times when truly we have to survive. Yes. Right. right? So 
uh, you know, someone's chasing you down the street trying to steal your purse from you, you need to run, right? Mm. All your energies need to be focused on surviving. Mm. Um, if you're going through some type of financial crisis, you need to focus all your energy on paying those bills that are most important, kind of narrowing your, your focus and not splurging on restaurants and that type mm. of thing. So this is a time for survival. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I think what happens is if we're not careful, we can just kind of remain in survival mode and not mm. realize that even when we are kind of going through times of crisis that God has called us to still overcome and then to thrive. And so for me, I really think it's about focus rather than focusing on the threats around you, yeah. right? And obviously we're talking about... Um, we're not talking about like violent, you know, kind of imminent threats, yeah. like your life is on the line, right? So we're talking more kind of like psychological threats that are happening around us rather than focusing on all the things that are going wrong, right? All the things that you don't have, yeah. um, start focusing on, wow, what did God put in my hand? Like, mm. what can I take advantage of? Rather than, we talked about this in the message, rather than me comparing what I have to someone else or what I don't have to what they have, which it gets a lot of us. In fact, someone just texted me today and they're like, you know, why are you looking at my life? Like even today I was battling with the comparison trap, mm. right? Rather than focusing on that, focusing on, wow, God, what has God given me? He's given me so much. Let me take advantage of what he has given me. So for me, it's really to know how to thrive and to bear fruit and to be producers during this crazy season that we're living in. Yeah. It's about focus, right? Focus. It's about focusing on, you know, what God has given you, focusing on what he's called you to do, aware of the environment, yeah. right? But not allowing that external environment or the disruption that you're experiencing to then cause you to not produce. Mm, so you, we, so when Mufasa says you've forgotten who you, you are, so therefore you've forgotten me. Yeah, he was it, focusing on the wrong thing, mm, right? So he was focusing on the threat of, you know, if Scar tells the pride, they're yeah. going to be upset with me. They're going to cast me out. He was focusing on mm -hmm. the fact that he really thought he killed his father, mm -hmm. right? And so it was fear. Fear is uh, the acronym false evidence appearing real, yeah. right? And so he was focusing on the wrong thing as opposed to focusing on, my identity, as opposed to focusing on all the things that God has, not God, as, as that Mufasa, <laughs> all the things that Mufasa, my father, um, yeah. had told me prior to, right, and willing to step into and step and live out of that, um, uh, live out of that positive identity. Mm. Um, he was focusing on the wrong thing. So as a result, you know, he ran, he got caught up with yeah. um, Timon and Pumbaa. Right. Makes for a good movie, yeah. right? But um, it doesn't make for a good life, mm. you know? Mm, yeah, who are your Timon and Pumas? I know. Ooh, that's the word. <laughs> you can preach on that. Who are your Who are your Timon yeah, and Pumas? People you hanging with that you should not be hanging with. That's right. They're cool people, right? right? But they're just diverting you from living out your calling. Right. Ooh, ooh that's yep. a whole different. Yeah, that's a whole nother word. Ooh, right there. Okay. But okay, I, I love that. I love that how you incorporated the, that that storyline and also the quote in itself into the word. Um, so again, I got two more Disney mm -hmm. Disney quotes. Um, from Disney movies, so I want to I want you to guess where it's from okay. first of all, and ask uh, how does that play into um, our lives as trying to or in our lives as God as excuse me in our lives as the created producers okay. in living a great and fearless life. Yeah. Okay, so here's the first quote: "Our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it." Brave. Yes. Is that brave, really? Yeah, that's brave. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a little too easy because yeah, yeah. it had the word in it, too. But honestly, I mean, that Dis that quote could really be any Disney movie. Like, that, you know, the, most, most Disney movies, yeah. like, it's about you overcoming some type of personal, right. like, personal battle. Yeah. Right. But say it again. You said your so, fate lives. Yeah, our fate lives within us. You only have to be brave enough to see it. Okay. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Brave. Brave mm. is a good one. How does that, how, how can that be incorporated to maybe either some, some of the words you said from this sermon or just in, in totality of, like, us living a fearless, great life what that God has already called us to live. Yeah. Um, I, I think, it, to me, that quote speaks to your willingness to kind of look at yourself in the mirror and mm. to have courage to see who God has called you to be, right? Yeah. And so I think that's kind of what it's... Again, it kind of goes back to your... Who are you listening to, right? Mm. So are you listening to the scars, right? If we're going to mm. stay with it, are you listening to the scars of your life, you know, who are telling you that you're no good, that you made mistakes, that you're yeah. this, that, you're the other? Or are you listening to what God has said to you, what God has spoken into you, what God has called you to do? And so the quote, you know, you know, your, what was it? Your, uh, your fate? Our fate. Our fate lives within us. Yeah. So, um, I mean, not to make it sound like you're predestined and the whole predestination mm -hmm. thing, but I think there is some truth to that, that... You know, if you can recognize who God has called you to be, um, 
you can do great things. Fire. Yeah. All for right. Sure. All right. Last one. The flower that blooms in adversity is the most rare and beautiful of all. The flower that blooms in adversity. adversity. So it has to be a female movie. The flower that blooms in adversity mm. is the most beautiful of them all. Mm -hmm. Female is the main character. Flower that blooms, not uh, Little Mermaid. Nope. Uh, the flower that blooms. I'm going through my Disney, yeah. uh, <laughs> Disney Plus catalog. I have no idea. Maybe what are other female Disney movies? Man, Little Mermaid. Who else? Mm -hmm. There is Brave. There is the Princess and the the Princess and the Tiana. Frog. Tiana, yeah, yeah, that's that Tiana. One. I don't. Know. It could be that one. Is that one. Is that Princess and the Frog. Incorrect, sir. Oh. <laughs> it is Mulan. Okay, okay. Mulan. Mulan. Okay. That's, so, that's a good one. So Mulan, the flower that blooms in adversity, is the most rare and beautiful of all. Mm. How, how can that? How can that mm -hmm. play into our lives? Oh man, that's a good one too. Um, I think they're they're kind of hitting at the same thing. I think this one specifically is addressing that for our life, none of our lives are like perfect. None yeah. of us come from this like perfectly manicured, perfectly fertilized flower yeah. bed. Like yeah. all of us come through some rough places, some rough times. Um, obviously, some of us have a rougher time, a rougher backstory than others, but mm. all of us are trying to to grow in spite of the environment around us, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so I can see that. I think about individuals who... Um, there's it's actually this individual by the name of his name is Anthony Trucks, former mm. NFL football player turned motivational speaker. I was listening mm. to his story, and he was just sharing his story about like you know foster care, bouncing around from home to home, abandoned, left. Like it was just one wow. thing after another. I think about Eric Thomas, right, yeah. motivational speaker, same thing, like homeless, abandoned, you know, one thing after another, all these negative, adverse things. But yeah. then you look at their lives, both Anthony Trucks, both er Eric Thomas motivational speakers, empowering, helping other people, yeah. living at a, high, you know, at a high level. And I guess what that does, and I hope it encourages someone to think that just because you might have had a rough start doesn't mean you won't be able to soar, mm. right? I think that's tweetable, right? Mm, just yeah. because you had a rough start, <laughs> right? The, and your, your, when your life was taken off, when the plane was leaving the runway, it may have been bumpy, doesn't mean that you still won't be able to soar and to mm. ultimately reach your destination. Yeah. Right? So yeah. that's what I think about. No, that's good. About that. yeah. Yo, these, these Disney movies can come out. I with know, man. I need to go back and yeah. use them more often. <laughs> no, but all right, good. So you got one out of those, of, of the two. But, one out of two, not bad. But again, um, so God allowing us already to live these great and fearless lives. Um, and one of the things that comes with disruption, I think, um, can be, you kind of touched already upon it, is comparison. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it in the ceremony. You, you talked about comparison and how it, it's, it's one of the factors that, um, that, don't, that does not, that, what's the word? Not, not allow. Not allow? What's mm -hmm. the word? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does not prevents allow us. us. Prevention. There you mm -hmm. go. Prevents um, us, yeah. Comparison is one of the things that prevents us from living the life yeah. that God has called us to be. And so I have a song. I mean, I don't have a song, but Jonathan McReynolds has a song. Yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Comparison Kills. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've heard it. Oh, yeah. Um, I think um, I have two, two lyric stanzas that I want to go through, and, and I kind of want to hear your opinion on that. And so um, the first one, it goes like this. It goes, pressure gets hot, and, heat, and with heat come mirages. So you think it's cool over there. Your thirst is real, but water can't fill what comparison kills mm. thoughts thoughts say that again say one more time pressure gets hot right. and with heat comes mirages mm -hmm. so you think it's cool over there mm -hmm. your thirst is real but water can't fill what comparison kills wow that's deep man it <laughs> is <laughs> it is yeah, i gotta sit on that one chew on that one for a little while yeah. um yeah i think at the heart of what he's saying is that it, it feels like he's saying, you know, if you allow yourself to get to fall into that comparison trap, yeah. you know, almost like a mirage, like, That's right. you know, you allow yourself to fall into that, that that is, um, you know, you'll never really satisfy your own hunger, your own mm. thirst, your own issues. It's interesting because, you know, I'm bringing up Eric Thomas again, because I just yesterday listened to, uh, I was on a conference with him yeah. where he was speaking and he said, <laughs> 
he was talking about how a lot of times you look at the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. Right. And he said something that I thought was very interesting. He said basically that sometimes the grass is greener on the other side because the grass actually is greener on the other side. Mm. Right. Okay. And that what we need to do is not not um, envy the grass. Mm. What we need to do is model the effort that went into making that grass mm. green. Right. And so, mm. yeah, the grass might be greener. Like you yeah. could look at someone else's life and you're like, man, they are thriving yeah. in these areas. But don't don't be envious of the car, the house, the wife, the kid. Like, don't be envious of those things. Yeah. Like, if you're going to envy anything, like, look at what type of effort are they putting into their life, mm. right? Are they getting up at the you know, crack of dawn? Are they, you know, going harder, running faster? Are they doing things? And and that's what we should be modeling. And so I kind of feel, I, I was really feeling that because, mm. yes, I don't want to look at someone else's gift and think, oh, man, you got you know, five talents, you got two talents, I only got one talent. And then for me to sit on my one talent, no, I yeah. want to say, man, you got two talents and you were able to do what with that two talents? Mm. Wow, how did you do it? Okay, mm. if you're able to do that, maybe I can t- learn from you and yeah. I can take my one and make it two. And mm. then I can take my two and make it four. And maybe, you know, I'll be able to learn yeah. from the effort that you're putting forward. So granted, yes, comparison kills, to Jonathan McReynolds' point, and that if you allow yourself to fall into the comparison trap, it will prevent you from really maximizing your potential. Yeah. So therefore don't compare the product. Yeah. Right. Don't compare what they've done, but yeah. look at the effort that they put into the, the lifestyle. Process. The process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yep. Oh, I like that. He said don't compare with the product, but at le- but look, learn, learn learn from, from the, the process. process. Yep. No, that's that's fire. That's fire. Um okay the next one is you spend all night admiring pictures. Uh, they make life look perfect as they should. IG, let's go. But you wouldn't know the picture's story and how long it took to make it good. Oh, I feel oh, like yeah, what good. you were saying yeah, kind of good. really ties that's in with this one, right? Yep. Yeah, the timing and the process that goes into the things that we see in yeah. the forefront, right? Yeah, there's a whole, there's a, I don't know if you've seen it, there's a whole Instagram. Here we go, I, here we go. I think it's like a community or I don't know if it's like a, I don't know. I don't know how I found it. It was probably okay. on the explore tab or whatever Instagram uh-huh. of like women who will have like one picture of themselves yeah. and then another picture right next to themselves. Mm-hmm. And it's like the same person. So one picture will be like, this is what Instagram normally shows you. Right. Mm. And so it'll be a woman in like some Spanx or something. Yeah. Yeah. And like her body's all trim. Yeah, but yeah. then like the real picture, like when she lets herself go, it's like she's kind of falling over herself. Like she's not as slim. Mm. It's like, but this is the exact same person yeah. taken at the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just interesting because it's like a whole movement on Instagram where people are saying, like, this is what people want you to think they look like, but this is what they really do look like. So mm. don't get so caught up in like the Instagram model, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I've seen, so that's one example. And there's other examples. I was actually watching some person, I can't remember who, but she was an Instagram type of, I'm not, not a model, but just influencer. Uh-huh. And she took a picture of herself Getting out of bread, uh, getting out of bed, and there was like breakfast in bed at some fancy Fran- French resort, resort sure. somewhere. Uh-huh. And and then in the caption below, she was like, "Don't get it twisted. It took me six hours to get this shot. I had already mm. taken a shower. My hair had just been done professionally." Mm. Like she began to talk about everything that went into this one to picture. Yeah. But if you just looked at the picture, you think, "Wow, she wakes up like that." <laughs> like. Wow, she's in this French. She was like, "Yo, you know, we the plane tickets were like three thousand dollars to get over here." Like she starts going into like everything that mm. she had to pay just to get that one shot. And she was like, don't believe everything that you see. Mm. Right. And so I think that's the point is you can look at someone else's grasp and be like, Oh, I want that. Not realizing, okay, that's probably a mirage. That's right. not real. Right. right. Whatever you're seeing online, it's really not real. Um, and if it is real, don't, don't discount the effort that went into getting that shot, that picture, mm. that lifestyle, yeah. that, that, you know, whatever that product. Yeah. Right. And so don't, don't focus on that. Focus on the process. Mm. So was the I'm curious. Was the Instagram the first one you're talking about? Or was, was it like a like a movement that like was like supporting? Like it was yeah, like a right, 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 right. It was a it was a movement that was supporting like, um, or not maybe not supporting. It was like denouncing. Yeah. You, you know all these glamour shots. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. almost like if me you taking a picture of me right now and I suck in my stomach yeah. and I have on like a girdle or whatever like yeah, yeah. and I'm like look at me versus. I take all that off and I just slouch over and you can see my rolls, you can see my fat, uh, you, you can go. see my, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's showing like this is the exact same person taking five minutes apart, yeah. right? Don't think that this is how they normally look, mm. right? And so that was the whole point of the movie. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. I gotta, I gotta look at that. That's cool. Um, and something about the comparison, you know, when you mentioned it in the sermon that I thought that was 
uh, you, you talked the story, the story about the the disciples, right? Mm-hmm. And what they were given, mm-hmm. um, and then you were you were kind of saying um, it, it, when you finished the the image. Or I'm sorry, when you finished the illustration, you said that if anything, we should be comparing ourselves with ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, with just in a different place at a different time. And I felt like when you said that, that one, that one really spoke to me because mm-hmm. I felt like. Um, like, like in those, in the same in the same strand where you said, uh, when we're, if we are gonna be comparing, you know, like at least look at the pro, like don't be envious of the product, but look at the process, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, like I, like I feel like I already already do that, um, and I feel like it's I, I'm I'm more so concerned about the product. I'm more so concerned mm-hmm. about myself being in comparing with. My, I'm I'm 23 years old, and I look at other 23 year olds like, I, where are they? Mm-hmm. Like, um, like I think about some NBA players, low key. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you guys do this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all do this too. But like, I I look at like NBA players who We're are like 23, 23 years old, or maybe 24 or 22, and I'm like, yo, like where? What is? I mean, obviously, I am a short man, but like, <laughs> I'm thinking like. Like, w- look look at what what they're doing with their lives, yeah. right? It's like, yo, like this this guy probably was in my class. This guy this guy yeah. could have been in my 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 econ class or whatever. Yeah. But like, I go into like a small comparison thing. But it's not just even with basketball, but just in general. Like, um, I'm like, dang, like this this person is doing this yeah. at the same age, yeah. you know. And I and I'm, I'm more so at the product. But then, when you said check out yourself. Check yourself. Check mm-hmm. yourself. Compare if you're gonna compare compare yourself with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, man, like five years ago, I didn't see myself doing ministry. I, mm-hmm. I was, you know, before I was before I believed that God was gonna be God wanted me to to, to go into ministry. I, um, I I didn't know what I was want, wanting mm-hmm. to do in my life. And so five years ago, like if if I started comparing myself, I was like, where was I five years ago? Where did I want to be? Um, where did I want to go? And where was I? I was like. Com- the answers were were just bizarre. Like I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was, mm. uh, and so let alone like putting myself now where I'm I'm able to just be in a place of ministry mm-hmm. and work in, in church ministry is just like wild. It's like the lens the lens have changed. Mm-hmm. The lens have changed from my own perspective, um, and I, f- I feel like yeah, it just it just changed everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's uh, good. That's just crazy in mm-hmm. itself, all right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's just something I just want to share. But it, that kind of goes in with how using that, um, you said something, um, three three simple words that was fire. Perspective determines response. Mm-hmm. That's it, simple. Perspective determines response. Mm-hmm. So like, what is it that, like, what is it that God has already given us? What is it that God has already been doing? What is it that God has already provided for you um, that that is allowing you to live you know, the life that God wants us to live. Yeah. I, you know, I guess the best way I can illustrate this, and then maybe I should have used this in my sermon, was I was in Oakwood. I was a college student. I yeah. went over to my friends. Um, no, a friend and I were roommates together. Actually, I was in the seminary. We were yeah. roommates together. Um, his name was Martin Lister. He's in the Air Force now, a good friend of mine. And we were roommates at Andrews Bering Springs. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't married. He wasn't married. We had no food in the house. Mm. Like, cupboards, cupboards, cupboards were bare. Um, Not even no ramen? No. Bro, Hot it was noodles, bare. Nothing? It was bare. It was bare. Okay. It was bare. So his mom, his his mom, I think it was just his mom. His mom came up to visit. And she, um, man, lovely lady, lovely woman. She came in there. She was like, let me just go ahead and fix y'all something to eat real quick. Mm. Right? Mm. She went into our kitchen. I don't know where she found that food. <laughs> Bro, she went into our kitchen and she pulled out. She's like, oh, I can use this. Oh, yeah, I can use this. And she pulled out all type of randomness yeah, and yeah. made like a legit like three-course meal. meal. <laughs> Bro, so good. I was just like, how did you make this out of what was Y'all in there? Have, yeah, yeah. Right? And so for me, it was like, she had an eye mm. for seeing what we what clearly was there. Yeah. And we had an eye for seeing what wasn't there. Mm. And I think a lot of people, when you look at your life, you see what you don't have. That's right. Well, I don't have this, and I don't not this, and I don't have that. And because of all these things that you don't have, you think, well, because I don't have enough, then there's nothing I can do with this, mm. as opposed to having a perspective which says, no, look at all that I do have, mm. and then let me be a creator and take what I do have mm. and then make it into something even greater and something more. Yeah. And so for me, I think that's the essence of your perspective determines your response. Yeah. You know, if you look at your life and, the, and you feel like your cupboards are bare, yeah. you're not going to cook a meal, right? Ooh. But if you look at your life and Ooh, you realize, yeah. okay, I mean, yeah, I don't got a whole lot, but I got some garbanzo beans. I mm. got at least a little bit of rice. I got mm. this over here. I can pull this thing together. I got some spices yeah. and I can make a, a meal and be satisfied with mm. it. And that meal will be to God's glory. And I just think really 
I don't want to speak on behalf of God, but I just kind of feel like when we take advantage and use what he's given us. No, I'm not going to speak on behalf of God. This is what the word says. Like when you use what's in your hand, he gives you more. Mm. Right? So he's like, yo, you were able to take that one can of garbanzo beans and that one little half bag of rice and that one little thing over there and some spices and you were able to make this meal? Okay, Mm. let me give you more. Mm. Let me give you more. Mm. And so then he literally can say to us, well done, good and faithful. You were faithful in the few things you had. Now I'm going to I'm give you like a full blown chef kitchen and let you have your way in that thing. So I think mm. that's the when we talk about perspective determines response. But if you show up in your life and you're like, well, God, all I got is this one little can, or all I got is one little thing, and you don't do anything with it, he's yeah. like, give me this can. I'm gonna give it to someone who knows how to do something with it. Ooh. And so he takes our one talent and he gives it to the person with ten, Ooh. right? And so I think yeah. that's that's what we have to understand is like, no, no, when you look at your life, don't look at what you don't have, Moses. Went to God, burning bush, yeah. and, and God was like, what's in your hand? Moses was like, I can't speak. I, I can't have anything. And he said, what's in your hand? Mm. I have a rod. He's like, that's enough. I'm going to mm-hmm. use that, and I'm going to free my people. Mm-hmm. Right? And so we just have to have the, the proper perspective when we look in the mirror and when we understand what God has given us. Um, yeah, man, we just got to mm. take what he's given us and go. The fruit that we yeah. give. The fruit yeah. that we get, right? Right. Um, you know, Carol Spence was on us on Facebook um, during our sermon, mm-hmm. and she commented live with us. So, Carol, shout out to Carol. She said, she said simply, to bear fruit is to live. Mm. Mm. To bear fruit is to live. Is that how, how would you respond to that? Um, I think that's legit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issues with that at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, what are you doing? What are you doing with what God? What God's giving you? Like, what are you doing, fam? To, to to everyone that's watching, what are you doing um, with what God has already given you? So, um, you said one of the things that God has given us is other than perspective, right? Um, God gives us dominion, mm-hmm. dominion. So, um, and then this you kind of went into the examples of, or I'm sorry, you you kind of went into how there are different types of ways where, um, I guess, there are different types of of responses, I guess, the responses in how we respond to um, the things that we already given, but kind of in the negative, vers- mm-hmm. ne- in the negative way. Um, so there's, you said fatalism, nihilism, narcissism, and, and then there's something called co-creation. So mm-hmm. again, can you just remind us what is fatalism, nihilism, and, and you know, can you remind yeah. us what those are? Yeah. First? So I think some of us, we fall into one of these th- four camps, Yeah. right? Yeah, these yeah. four ditches. Fatalism basically says... God is really, um, God is really big. I'm really small. Yeah. And basically, my life is I, whatever God says. That's what's going to be. Mm, right. Fatalism. And so that's fatalism. Fatalism basically says, you know, if God doesn't give me permission to do it, I'm not going to do it. If God doesn't mm. open the door, I'm not going to walk yep. through it. If yep. God doesn't build a house, then it's not going to be built. Yeah. Right. That's fatalism. Yeah. Um, and nihil, which let me just say, I think a lot of Christians fall into, and I say specifically, I think a lot of Seventh Day Adventist Christians fall into that camp where we feel like, well, you know, we want the Spirit to lead, we want the Spirit to guide us, you know, thy word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. We kind of feel like I just need to be patient and wait on God, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not going to move, right? Um, but the reality is that God has not called us just to depend on him in all things. God's called us to be partners with him, mm. right? He pulls his weight. We pull our weight. Yeah. You yeah. know, was it Aristotle who said, pray as though everything depends on God and work as though everything depends on you, right? Mm. That's the essence of co-creationism, right? Wow. I'm going to pray like it's all on God, but I'm also going to work like it's all on me. Yeah. Nihilism is basically saying um, God is really small and I'm really small, mm. right? So nothing matters anyway, mm. Right, life is horrible. Life sucks, and case that I what will be will be. Yeah. Um, and then narcissism. I think we're all familiar with that term. It's God is really small, and I'm really big, and God becomes nothing more than a rabbit's foot for us. Mm. Right, and so God becomes my good luck charm. Yeah. God is there. He's my self help guru, genie. He helps me win at life. Mm. Right. Um, he helps me succeed, and so I'm just going to keep God in my back pocket. And yeah. then when I need him, I'm going to pull him out to help unlock the door that's in front of me. Yeah. Right. And so those are like kind of the three detrimental negative camps that we yeah. fall into. And then co-creationism obviously is where you and God are partners, pilot, co-pilot, um, you know, um, chef, sous chef, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, you guys are in it together making it happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. And I think I really love the co-creation, or at least the definition of that, because I think 
the partnering with God, I think, um, is just it calls it it, it it gives us a call for action. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it doesn't leave us to be kind of like just wandering and just waiting, like mm-hmm. you said, right? And it actually calls for an active action mm-hmm. on our end as mm-hmm. well. Like God is moving and so are we. Yep. So I think that's what's beautiful about those. But so what are some of the examples of how the everyday average Christian embodies some of those negative characteristics? Mm-hmm. Yes. So I think like what I said earlier with the fatalism, it is you feeling as though everything is on God, yeah. right? And so I think one example that I know personally is someone, I know someone who's extremely talented, extremely intellectual, extremely smart, and um, but they won't go back to school to get their doctorate. They won't go back to mm. get their, to continue their education because they feel like the spirit hasn't given me release to do that yet, mm. right? So it's like, okay, I get that. Mm. But at the same time, like, if you feel like God is calling you to do a certain thing, then by all means, right. like, do that thing, right. right? But don't not do something because you're waiting for God mm. to give you release, right? And I think that's the point. A lot of times mm. individuals say, well, I'm not going to do anything until God says go. Yeah. And the question is, well, does that mean you're not going to build the table until God says build the table, right? Mm. When God clearly said be fruitful and multiply, yeah. and whatever that looks like, he's giving you agency, he's giving you passions, he's giving you gifts. It's not like I'm going to pursue this initiative or to pursue this direction in my life for self-serving purposes, yeah. right? Where I'm trying to build my own kingdom. It's like, no, I want to add value to the body of Christ. I want to take care of my family. I'm trying to make, you know, take my five talents and make them 10, Yeah, right? Interestingly enough, in the story, um, the the master did not tell them how to do it or why to do it or yeah. where to do it or even or even to do it. He just said, I'm going to give you five, two, and you won, mm. right? And then he bounced, mm. right? And so they had to take it upon themselves to go forward and to build, to expand, to allow their gifts to grow. And I think people who fall into that fatalistic mentality kind of sit back passively saying, I'm not going to do anything until God says so. When mm. it comes to nihilism, um, I think, I don't know, some modern day examples of nihilism, you know, someone who thinks that neither they nor God has any control or bearing in life. That's really essentially what nihilism is. Mm. It's like God is really small, so really God has no control. And I am really small, so it's almost like fate becomes God, mm. right? Yeah, and so yeah. whatever, whatever happens, that becomes sovereign that becomes lord right and so um i don't know and there may be i'm sure individuals who fall into that category but i'll be hard pressed to think of individual what that actually looks like other than someone just saying you know you know kind of is i think about someone who's just like kind of moping around like Mm. oh whatever i do is not going to matter anyway okay you know so um and then narcissism i think we all kind of know what narcissism kind of looks like it's it's about me mm. it's about my benefit my goals my my life my wealth my family and i'm just going to use god as a means to building my own kingdom whenever it's convenient whenever it's convenient mm, exactly okay you know and then lastly co-creation how and so co-creation is um is when you recognize that god has placed within you a set of skills yeah. a set of abilities and i want to use those to partner with god to create and so god might very well say Hey, this is the direction, yeah. right? This is the direction I want you to go. And then, as you're walking down the direction, you are, you're creating, you're innovating, you're growing your gifts, yeah. you're using what he's given you. It's almost like, for example, if you see a need, like you can sit back and you can say, "Man, I see, I see my brother who's who's um, homeless over there, mm. but I'm not gonna do anything because this morning in my devotional, God did not tell me to help mm. a homeless person." It's like, does he have to actually tell you to help a homeless person yeah. when he's already given you everything that you? need in order to actually help that person. Yeah. You know, I think everything that we experience in life by and large is a result of someone taking action and creating it, whether yeah. it's from these microphones to this table. God didn't create any of this, mm-hmm. right? I mean, literally, he did not create any of this. He has given all of this. He has given us the knowledge and the wisdom and yep. the insight in how to create these things. Yep. But he did not actually say, let there be a camera, yeah. right? Let there be a microphone. No, he said, let there be man. You know, he formed us. He breathed into us the breath of life. And he said, now you all go be fruitful, multiply, mm. have dominion over the world, subdue yeah. it, and grow it. So, yeah, I just, my burden is that we as as Christians, we as members of the Relove community, or if you're a part of another community, that we would recognize that everything you need, God has already given you. Mm. And God is asking you to stop complaining, yeah. to stop sitting on your hands, to stop looking at what you don't have, and God is saying, what have I given you? Now go forth and create. Right. Oh. 
Yeah, that's uh, that leads me to the next and the last part of, of our talk today. Um, you know, God granting us and giving us agency. You know, mm-hmm. that goes hand in hand mm-hmm. with the the co-creation and living a, a life of the co-creation and partnering with God, right? And so I just want to read the definition. I kind of want to hear your thoughts as uh, before, right before we close. So this is the definition of agency. And is there any thing that you can, any, is there any words or phrases that you want to take away or add to, you know, to add to this definition of agency? Mm-hmm. I got this from Google. So agency, one of the definitions is action or intervention, especially such as to produce a particular effect. Mm, say that one more time. Action or intervention, especially such as to produce a particular effect. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, so God gives us agency. Yeah, God gives us. I think that's spot on, man. I think I love that definition. I think it's you being you are in the you are quote unquote in the driver's seat, mm. and God is saying drive the car. You know, mm. be you know go forward. I think. Um, obviously Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six, trust in the Lord with all your heart yeah. and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it almost feels like co-creationism is you're in the driver's seat. God's the navigator. Mm. Right. And I think a lot of times we want, or we reverse it and say, God's in the driver's seat and I'm in the back seat. This yeah. is wherever God takes me. That's yeah. where I'm going to go. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to recognizing, no, God says, I will direct your path. I that's didn't right. say I will drive the car. That's right. I didn't say I would drive your life. That's no, right. I, will di- I will show you this is the way, that is the way, you know, go here, go there. But God is actually the one who is charting the path for us. And um, we follow where he leads based off our gifts, our abilities, mm. our passions. So yeah, I love that. I think agency is you recognizing that God has given you a special skill set. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I like that. Just yeah, uh, just to, just to harken back to yeah. uh, what was the movie? The um, um, oh, wait. The, um, born, have, um, not born. Liam, 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 yeah. Liam Neeson, Taken, yeah, Taken. <laughs> I have a special set of skills. <laughs> I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's it. I think God is like, yo, I've given you a skill set. I've yeah. given you tools. I've given you um, abilities, and I want you to use those to be a blessing to those around you, to your family, to those around you, and ultimately to the kingdom. Yes, yes. Um, you know, God being, you know, we are the driver. We are the driver, and God navigating with us. Is, mm-hmm. is, is God a backseat driver? I, don't, I hope not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and, and I said, I think I said this in my, in my message, like, God's not a micromanager. Yeah, either. yeah, you said You that. know what I'm saying? Like, God is not going to wake you up and say, I mean, granted, he's God, so he can do whatever he wants. True, right? true, but true. I just don't see, I don't see God, like, micromanaging our lives to the mm. point where, hey, today I want you to eat oatmeal, tomorrow I want you to eat this, tomorrow next day. I feel like now there may be something where you're about to eat something and God knows that's not going to sit well with you. And so God might be like, mm, you shouldn't eat that, mm. right? So I think God leads us, yeah. right? I mean, I think we've experienced that in relationships. I know I have people that I've dated in the past and God was like, mm, she ain't the one, right? And so it's like, okay, I can choose to listen to him or not listen to him, yeah. right? And so... um I think God leads us as we acknowledge him, but I think to, to try to place our lives, to make God responsible for our lives. Mm. I feel like God is like, no, I've given you a life. Now I want you to go forward. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. Yeah. And yeah, I'm your partner. We're doing this together, but you're ultimately responsible. That's right. You know? That's right. And yeah. so whatever you do or don't do, it's on you. Yeah. Right. So if you choose to not do anything, then God's like, what did you do with the life that I gave you? Yeah. Right. And then if you choose to produce, God's going to be like, well done, good and faithful. Mm. You know, God doesn't pat himself on the back and say, hey, good job, God. Yeah, I, no, had a no. great, I did a great job with Jeremiah. Like, yeah. he's not doing that. He's like, no, Jeremiah, well done, good and mm. faithful. You were faithful in a few things. Now I'm going to make you rule over many. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I see the imagery, I see the illustration of God being a, a pretty chill navigator in the car. You mm-hmm. know how like you're the driver, which is obviously responsible for driving whoever's in the car. And then if you ride shotgun, you know, you're responsible for navigation, mm-hmm. music, mm-hmm. Um, and keeping the driver awake. Yep. That's a big one. Yeah, so, so, some people need to hear that. Yeah. Some people need to know that. Yeah. You know, if you are in the passenger she- seat, you, you have the responsibility mm-hmm. to also keep the driver awake. Mm-hmm. But in my head and in my heart, I believe God is a, a chill backseat driver. Mm-hmm. You know, not all the time as a driver I'm going to listen because for whatever reason, I'm just going to think that I know the way. That you know best. Right. I think sometimes, though, we try to relegate God to the trunk. 
Ooh. Right? So we try to be like, um, Uh-oh. I'm not, I don't like what you just, I, Uh-oh. I'm not trying to exit. And so we put God in the trunk, we put him on the <laughs> roof, we put him, you know, somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you have the, you have the agency to do that. Yes, yeah, right. right. You're that's in control, right. but it won't work out for your benefit, right? Mm. Ultimately, you have to recognize that wherever you're, wherever the road is taking you, God has already been there, mm. right? God, he sees the end from the beginning. He knows the, the best route to take. And so you being in a trusting, abiding relationship with him where you are, like the word says, you are leaning on him. You're not yeah. leaning on your your driving skills. Like, yeah, oh, man, yeah. I'm really good at driving. No, I'm leaning on God's ability to help direct me. God, you've given me these gifts. I feel passionate about you know, starting this podcast, I feel passionate about, you know, reaching out to, you know, um, you know, the prison population. I feel passionate about trying to help, you know, single mothers or orphans. God, I really want to do this. You've given this to me. Show me the steps to take. And as I'm, it's, it's funny because as you start to move, God begins to direct, mm. right? I think some of us, we sit back and do nothing waiting for God to direct. It's like, no, okay, if you're passionate about you know, the foster care, like mm-hmm. show up to some of the foster care meetings, yeah, like sh- yeah. call up the agencies, start building relationships. And as you are moving, God begins to then navigate and he begins mm-hmm. to allow certain um, connections to be formed and for you like doors to be open. But as long as you're sitting back in your home saying, man, I would really like to get involved in this and this, you know, demographic, this population, yeah. but uh, I don't know if this is what God wants me to do. So I'm just not gonna do anything. Mm. You know, it's like you're missing you're, you're, you're underselling and short circuiting the gifts that God has given you, yeah. you know, and the agency that he's given you. I mess with that. I mess with yeah. that. Yo. So we obviously started conversation with a Disney quote. Mm-hmm. Um, and since Marvel is technically Disney, I'm going to end this conversation okay. on a Disney quote, uh, Spider-Man in the movie, Spider-Man and in the comics, it says with great power, comes great responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. So, um, hey guys, thank you again for joining us for this conversation at The Recall. Um, we always want to continue conversation, so comment, 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 questions, whatever you guys have. We want to talk about it here also and bring into the conversation um, that we record on the podcast. So, thanks for tuning in. Invite and text your friends about this podcast. We will continue to go into The Recall and we will Next week, we're going to continue our Permission Granted Mm -hmm. series. So, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Again, thank you, Pastor Seth, for being here and spending some time with me today. Let's get it. All right. Take care, everyone. Peace. It's okay.